Finding information on how to write better songs and lyrics is nearly impossible. So over the years, I decided to collect a whole lot of info that I was learning in a lot of different places like Berkeley. I decided to read a whole bunch of books by esteemed songwriters, and I definitely wrote a whole lot of bad songs for myself and clients as well. And all that information led me to today's topic on how to write great song lyrics. What's up everyone and welcome to the Wavebenders music channel, the place where you can learn everything about music production and songwriting. If you've been enjoying our videos, please make sure to like and subscribe to our content so we can continue to make more videos for you and the rest of the music community as well. So today's topic is essentially how to write great lyrics. And so I wanted to base that around pretty much three basic things that I feel like apply to lyric writing that a lot of people don't know about. And so I'm going to talk about some advanced techniques in a very kind of simple approach. So you get a really great look at what the top songwriters are actually doing in their own writing and how you can apply it to your own as well. And the three topics we're going to discuss in today's video are going to be about rhyme, how to write in terms of phrasing, and the third is going to be internal and external details. So without further ado, let's go into the first topic about rhyme. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of new songwriters do is actually failing to use all of the available rhyme possibilities that there are out there. The type of rhyme that a lot of new songwriters use is called perfect rhyme, and they tend to overuse it a whole bunch. Maisie's Grant in the Electric City. They call it that because of the electricity. And perfect rhyme is considered to be one of the strongest rhymes that exist and that's because the consonant sound and the vowel sound both rhyme together. So examples would be well and sell, chase and face, and form and dorm. But outside of perfect rhyme there's actually four other types of rhyme that you can use that make up a total count of five. The second type of rhyme you can use is called family rhyme and this is when the stressed vowel sound matches exactly and the ending consonant sounds are actually really close or are linked together. So examples would be wet and deck, float and yoke, and math and pass. The third is going to be additive slash subtractive rhyme. Additive means that a consonant ending has been added to the matching vowel sound and subtractive means that a consonant ending has been removed from the matching vowel sound. So examples of additive rhyme are stow and hope, year and feared, and down and found. Examples of subtractive rhyme are bake and stay, shout and now, and roll and no. Number four is assonance rhyme. This is when the stressed vowel sounds match, but the consonant endings are different. So examples are rope and known, straight and fame, and still and grip. And the fifth and final one is called consonance rhyme. And this means that the vowel sounds don't match, but the consonant ending is the same. So examples are bag and log, ground and bond, and sock and back. And the whole point of knowing all these five types of rhyme that there are is so you have more access to writing material for yourself. So having new capabilities of possible rhymes to go with gives you so much more material that you can use in your songs as well as songs for your clients too. So now we're actually going to talk about phrasing and how to use that in your writing process. So when it comes to phrasing, what really makes a song really flow well together and seem almost like storytelling or ascendant structure, it all comes down to how you actually structure your phrasing. And what I mean by that is how you actually lay out the ideas for each section. So each verse might serve a purpose of telling a story that the chorus might sum up. You might have two different attitudes towards the subject depending on if it's verse one or verse two. But before we get deeper into that, let's take a look at the most common kind of breakdowns of phrasing that there are. There's two super common phrasing sections that we see, and that's going to be four line sections and there's going to be six line sections. A four line example of a song might be Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's the most common. And then six line sections, you might know oh, that's Amore. And essentially in a four line session, there's going to be four lines of material that you can write. That could be possible sentences if you think of it like that. And in six line sections, it'll be six lines that you can actually write. And so I commonly see instead of one continuous idea that's being written towards, I see a lot of choppy kind of phrases that don't really fit together. And so our goal for writing lyrics for these types of phrases is for it to seem almost like sentence structure to be more of a storytelling flowing type of approach. So if you're writing about being in love, all of those four lines should describe in some way, shape or form how you feel, what's around you, that kind of stuff. Or you can split them up by having two lines dedicated to an idea and two of those other lines being dedicated to an idea too. This session can be about loving that person and this session can be about maybe I don't love them as much as I think. So those are the two ways that I see that are really common for four line section writing. And six line is going to be similar. One idea can be dedicated for all six of those lines or three lines can be dedicated to an idea and three more lines can be dedicated to an idea. You can make eight line sections or maybe 12 line sections if it's super long. But these are the two most common that I see and apply to most songs. And the third thing we're going to talk about is internal and external details. So if you don't know, external detail actually describes all the things that surround the main character of a song. These types of details in a song create an image in our listeners mind that really paints a picture for them. And internal detail describes the thoughts and emotions that are happening within our main character's mind or heart. Both of these are really key to making our listener really picture and feel what you have going on or what your main character has going on in the song. But what I want to mention to you is to find the right balance between these two in your song. So don't have too much external detail and don't have too much internal detail. If you have too much internal detail, then it may sound like someone that's telling you their life story that you really didn't ask about. And if you have too much external detail, then it really sounds like you have no point to your story at all. You have to find the right balance between these two to be able to create great images, but also help you feel the emotions that are going on. A great example of external detail is when Kendrick Lamar said, Money trees is 
is the perfect place for shading. And a great example of internal detail is when SZA said, Kendrick does a really great job of describing imagery that you picture in your mind. And SZA does a great job of showing emotions that she's actually feeling. I have an example for us to look at about how you can actually break this up if you would like to, depending on your structure for your sections. The first line could be external detailed based around creating that kind of image. The second one could be a blend between external and internal. And then the last one could be purely internal. The second half could also be external, then external, internal again, as well as internal once more. And I got this song structure from a John Mayer song called Why Georgia. He really does a great job of describing both external details that help you picture something, but also some internal things that he's also experiencing while he's kind of on this drive. The goal, once again, is to make sure that you're not giving too much of a detail and not too less of a detail. You have to find the right balance that really helps your listener both picture and feel what you have going on. These are genuinely great tips that I see top songwriters use. So I highly recommend that you try these methods and apply them to your own music so you can actually create some top-notch lyrics that really connect with your listener. And if you want me to do a deeper single video about one of these three topics, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to break it down for you as best I can to further go into detail about how you can actually apply it to your music and what it actually will mean for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe for more content and so it continues to spread to more people in the community. We really appreciate all your time and your effort to actually subscribe and join us. And make sure to follow us on social media so we can connect some more. But until the next video, peace.